So for a job earlier this year, I had to come up with a way to render thin film interference in Redshift. And Redshift doesn't have a built-in thin film shader that's needed to do that, unlike Octane, for example. So of course, what you could do is rely on trickery and use a bunch of falloffs and call it ramps to approximate such a look. However, what was needed for this project was a bit more physically plausible. So I looked around and found an OSL shader that did thin film interference. However, currently Redshift doesn't offer OSL support. So what I did was using Redshift's low-level nodes such as add, subtract, divide, and power, I rebuilt those 10 lines of OpenCL code into a Redshift shader network that looks like this when zoomed out. And you can see it's gotten a bit messy. And that's one of the reasons why for slightly more complex programming tasks, I prefer scripting language over node-based programming. But that's what Redshift had to offer, so I just slammed it together and packaged it up in this group that I called do not even try. You as a user do not have to touch that or open it. And in this video, I don't want to go over how I implemented this or how I built this. I might do that in another video, but it's really just translating a bit of code into lots and lots of nodes. Instead, what I want to do here is walk you through how to use this shader. So let's start up with the most simple, straightforward setup. What I have here is some geometry. And when we head over to the sub level, this is what it actually is. It's an extruded font with normals applied transform. So it sits neatly in the scene and then I remeshed it to just have a uniform triangular mesh, or basically any uniform mesh would do. And I wanted this uniform mesh because I'm writing an attribute onto those individual points in this point wrangle here. Basically, I'm just generating an attribute that's called T for thickness, for thin film thickness, which is a combination of a noise, just to give some variation to the film thickness, and a ramp that goes from a low value on top of this whole geometry to a high value at the bottom. And what this ramp simulates is the tendency of a soap film to be thicker at the bottom of an object or a bubble. So this sagging is done in those two lines here, just using the bounding box of this geometry to drive a value from zero to one, and then adding to it a bit of a distorted simplex noise, and then refitting it to be in the range of 0 0.02 to one. Then I attached the UV texture to this, just orthographic in this instance. Then I gave this UV coordinates, which actually for this setup would not be needed, but we might need them later if you want to actually use a texture to drive a thickness, and then just appended normals to fix the normals. Now, in my shader, in my shading network, what I have here is all these notes here are just there to generate a color value which I'll then feed into my reflection color on a standard redshift material that I set to a preset silver. Also, I added round corners here just to chamfer those corners of my text in the shader. And when I go up one level, you can see this is my interference material here. I promoted those four parameters to this level. So I can dial in the thickness minimum and the thickness maximum in nanometers and give the film, the thin film, its IOR, its index of reflection. And also I can dial in how strongly those color values that we generate will be mixed with the standard reflection color. So let's just start the Redshift render view here. And we can see this is the result of what we set up here. And when dialing in the index of reflection of our film, you can see those colors change their values. And also when we increase or decrease the maximum and the minimum thickness of our film that we have mapped on here. And if you want to do anything more complicated with it, you have to dive into the shader here. Again, these are the nodes that are used to generate those color values that are then being fed into our material. So what we have here is the minimum and maximum thickness coming in. Those are the parameters we have on our upper level. And they are used to basically remap our attribute T that we stored on the geometry's point. So if you want to use another point attribute or geometry attribute to drive your thin film thickness, you might want to set up in here. This is our IOR coming in here. And finally, our film mix strength, which then down here drives this mix vector node. Also, I appended a color correction just to correct my thin films gamma a bit. So you can dial in the look of that thin film in here as well. And again, this material is currently set up to be a silver. However, if we want to get more of a soap bubble look, we'll have to set up something a bit different. So this is my setup for rendering out a soap bubble. And for the geometry, what I did is I took a sphere, which I set to polygon with a rather high frequency, and then used a mountain sop to distort this a bit, and an attribute blur to smooth out some of the jaggies of the mountain sop. Then just extrude this a tiny bit, just a really low distance to give this a bit of thickness. Uh, make sure that we check output back down here. Again, this point wrangle is used to just set 
are thin film thickness ranging from 0.15 on the top of the bubble to 1.0 at the bottom here, again using the relative bounding box of our incoming geometry. Then set up UV textures, in this case orthographic, and actually I wouldn't need to do that because in the end I've been lazy and just used the triplanar mapping in Redshift, and finally appending normals to our geometry. So nothing too unusual here. When we go up one level, this is just lit by a light dome here, using a neat HDR from HDRI Haven. And we've got a grid for the background here. Now let's have a look at the material. Now again, same parameters promoted as previously, but when we dive in here, we can see our beginning here. This part where we look up the thickness of the film looks a bit different, so let's have a look at it. We still have this particle attribute lookup where we read out the thickness that's been written onto those individual points. However, we also have a texture sampler here where we're loading in a tiling texture of a few fluid swirls that are prepared, then mapping this triplanarly onto our geometry, and then converting the color value just to a grayscale, just taking out the red channel in this case. It's a grayscale image anyways. And what I do here is just a bit of look def just to make it look neater. I multiply the value of this texture that gives me those swirls, with our current thickness, then also scale down our current thickness to half of its original value and add this together with our swirls. That's about it. So when we go to render view now and let this converge quite a bit or actually switch to bucket rendering. And we see we're getting the result we were hoping for. This bubble with a bit of more intricate detail in here due to those swirly texture that we applied to our thin film thickness. So in this case, what you wanna do is just maybe experiment with this texture here and maybe adjust those values, how you mix in the overall thickness of the film with the texture that you load in there. A few other general tips when rendering soap bubbles. On the one hand, make sure that you have something to reflect into the bubble, some sort of area lights, HDR, just something to give a bit of detail to the reflection. Also, of course, soap bubbles come out better in front of a dark background and also a bit of glow or flare such as this helps a lot. All right, that's just a quick tip and a little giveaway if you, like me, need to render thin film interference in Redshift without using OSL. As always, intrigued to see what you guys create using this technique. And until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.